All right, so we are working on the never ending, getting the tires and wheels swapped out on the tractor. And now I've got rims pretty well painted. There's a little bit of paint lift there. It's like, I guess it's not the worst thing. I'm gonna let it go. We'll touch it up later. Right now we need it's to get- It's a farm tractor. <laughs> Well, you know, I don't want it to be lifting and then going to bare metal. So yeah. I will probably sand that little spot and touch it up so that it's, it's the longevity is the important part. on the front rims myself. We actually went to a local shop that I've used before and the guy assured me that there's no way his machine would do this, which sadly is total bullshit. He just didn't want to do it. So instead of doing it the easy way, which is to pay a shop 20 bucks to do it, um, I'm going to struggle to manually get these on. <laughs> so I've got some soapy water, just some regular old dish soap. I'm going to spray the rim really well. I'm going to spray the inside of the tire really well, just get them slippery so it goes on as easy as possible. Actually, I think I need to go this way. Isn't that what I decided? Yes, that's absolutely what I decided. I'm, I'm, I'm doing it backwards. All right, so the tricky part about these is that these tires are not very um, wide. So unlike a car tire that's like four times this width, you can kind of just stomp on it and it pops through. This one just collapses on itself. Um, so I'm taking the tire, I'm wedging it in there as far as I can get it, and then I'm going to take this and I'm going to press against it with my body weight and just slowly pry this outside bead onto the rim. A little bit by little bit, just continuously pressing as hard as I can against it, hoping that that other side doesn't slip. Yep, so I can feel it going in. All right, so we're more than halfway there already. That's a good sign. <laughs> Trying to not mar the certainly imperfect, but relatively nice paint. Oh, there we go. So that's half one. All right, step one accomplished. We're moving up to our makeshift workbench. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've got our wheel and our tire up on our little makeshift workbench here. Uh, we've got the tire halfway on the rim. We now need to insert our uh, tube. tube. Do Bottom. We, I, guess, I guess when we did this, did we do this backwards last time? It doesn't really matter. That's but, why I asked you if you wanted it. Yeah, well, it doesn't. The other direction. I, mean, I don't know if this will be easier or harder. I mean, obviously, we need to get this tube inside the wheel, and we need to have the stem come out here. <laughs> All right, so we've got our tubes in there. I think that'll be okay. Everybody looks pretty up. Oh, let me see what we got going here, though. I just want to make sure these aren't like crimped up in any weird way. Okay, that looks good. Flip her over and. Yep, I'm gonna make sure the stem is in place this is not a, a tutorial this is you can laugh at me for doing doing it the ridiculous this is, well way. this is one way of getting her done because <laughs> i'm now really concerned about the fact that i can't sort of keep my eye on the valve stem the whole time as i try to do this <laughs> I suppose that until I get this completely seated, I can still get my hand in there. So that is what we're gonna go with. All right, we're gonna use sort of our pair of vice grips to create sort of a, a locking point that the tire cannot come off the rim. And I'm gonna work my way around. <clears throat> Yeah. 
So you'll see I'm using the tube and I'm tucking it under the lip of the rim as not to scrape up the paint and damage anything. And then before it gets completely caught in there, I'm just pulling it back out. So we're slowly working our way around probably two to three inches at a time. Barely getting the screwdriver on the edge of the rim because I don't want to go into the middle where the new tube is. I don't want to pinch it or puncture it. So I'm trying to be really careful and not pinch the tube. All right, that's good. Just about got it. There it is. All right, so that is on. I will flip this over real quick and make sure my valve stem is lined up and not pinched. And then we will warm up the street and air these up. All right, that looks fine. I mean, I can just do that. Boom. All right, tire's on. Ta-da! Let's, uh, let's go get some air. What's happening? A 20. What does it need to be? 32. All right, so we're back up at One Straw Farm. As you saw earlier, we got our um, wheels um, mounted with trial and error and stupidity and a little bit of cussing. We figured it out. We didn't film the cussing part. <laughs> and so Christine is doing the reverse of what I did the other day. And she's jacking up the, uh, the corners of the tractor. Is that gonna make it? <laughs> I mean, I got it on the jack stand with that, so it should work. Yeah, it was just a little, it was just stabilizing it. Okay. So here we go. Christine is jacking it up. This should only have to go up maybe an inch or so off the jack stand, I think. And then our wheel should go in place pretty easily. Christine's tire service. If it'll go on, it'll go on. If it won't, it won't. <laughs> but I think on we're. That side it looks like it won't. Okay. On this side it looks like it will. So I think. Okay. We're gonna okay. I think it, you're fine. Now you definitely will go on. I guarantee it. Okay. okay. Gotta make sure I get the holes lined up. And then... All right. So the cup side goes in. The flat side goes out. Yep. And you can see that uh, there's sort of half of these holes have a slight cup to them that helps the the tire seat properly or the wheel i should say seat properly on the hub so anybody that's done this before knows in my opinion anyway that you should always hand tighten first never ever use a a pneumatic gun or a power driver to start your nuts because you'll inevitably wind up stripping something out at some point this is definitely going to take a minute to spin all of these on I get that if you have a shop or if you're doing a ton of these a day, that it's probably worth your while to risk stripping out the bolt and use a power driver of some sort. Um, but in the case of this, I would just like to not have one more thing break. And the extra five minutes it takes to do it by hand, to me, is no big deal. Can I just say that I love this part? Yeah. Yeah, it's very satisfying to me. Well, I gotta say, compared to, I think what I'll do is I'll stick a piece of either footage or a photograph of what the wheel looked like prior to, you know, right now. Um, the old dry rot three rib tire that was missing, didn't have much tread left. And uh, the completely rust covered rims and the rusty nuts and everything else. It's definitely night and day. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's probably good. We can tighten them a little more than that. Okay. So pull out your uh, jack stand. Okay, uh, pull from that. Side? Yeah. Yep.
All right, you can just set that aside for now. Let's see if you've got the hand strength to undo the pneumatic or not. All right, let's see. A gentle turn. There it is. And just another half turn on the on the uh, thing, not too far. And that should, you should be able to pull it out now. Boy. And just screw down your thing and push. Perfect, tighten up the valve. All right, so not too bad. We, we accomplished something today. There's uh, the front, new, front tires are on. Completely done by us. Taken off, sandblasted, wire brushed the nuts, new tires and tubes installed by us ourselves. It didn't cost hundreds of dollars for a service to come out and do it, and we didn't have to take it to a shop. And there's a sense of self-satisfaction. There is a sense of self-satisfaction. 24 hours later. All right, so I'm here back at uh, One Straw Farm again the next day, and uh, Drew and I have managed to get the old uh, 871 here out in a flat spot in sort of the tractor parking area. And we got it jacked up. We're in the process of taking the rims off. As you'll notice, as we use the impact gun to start taking the lug nuts off the, the uh, bolts that hold the hubs to the rims, it actually just shook the rim apart. That's how rotten these were from uh, sodium chloride or whatever it was, it was in there. Uh, but yeah, when we were told, that, oh, these rims will last you for a while yet. Well, I don't know. I think a uh, couple of trips across the farm and uh, this would have happened while we were using it. So it's a good thing we took the time and bought some uh, new rims and tires for this tractor. We'll see how it goes from here on out. All right, well, we've made progress of some sort. I'm now realizing that uh, getting this old tractor going is going to be a 157-step uh, process, and we're 48 steps in. So front wheels were on yesterday. Rear wheels are now off as we uh, use the impact wrench on them. The hubs, or I'm sorry, the rims actually just started to destroy themselves and shake apart and disintegrate. Um, literally giant holes shook into them. Um, so now as it sits, she is reversed. We've got front wheels on and in place, all ready to go. 
rear wheels are completely off. Um, I've got hubs and hardware in the trunk of the Tesla. But once we started getting these off, we realized that as you can see, these bolts are literally half rotten through um, from, you know, the salt load that was in these tires and I guess, you know, being worn weird over the years. So we decided pull the hubs off. I'm gonna take these back to the house. I'm gonna clean these up and paint them. Um, get a brand new bolt set all the way around. And um, then when we get back from New York, uh, this next weekend, we've got brand new tires and rims. They are sitting here, leaning up against the front. Um, when I have the new bolt sets in hand, uh, we will go ahead and throw these wheels on there and uh, it'll be time to sort out the electrical system so we can get it running. So here's one of the bolts. This is an example of what actually came out of the rim. You can see that probably at least a third, maybe half of the bolt is actually rotted from the bolt itself because of probably, I'm guessing, you know, sodium chloride or, or whatever they use to load the wheels. This is what the bolt should look like. There's a whole bolt. So I have a new set that I just ordered plus a couple of extra from Steiner Tractor. Um, but now I've got these hubs off and while I have them off, I'm gonna go ahead and clean them up and paint them. And then hopefully we will replace these with all brand new and uh, get these hubs back on the tractor. Um, and uh, we'll have a actual tractor that has all four good wheels. Um, the last thing I'm gonna to need to do after that is to work on the ignition system and get fire to those spark plugs so we can get it running. Um, we absolutely need to get it up to the farm. We were just at the farm the other day and it's it's pretty unwieldy up there. Everything is really growing in big. So we need to get the tractor up there and a flail mower up there and get it all cut down and then start maintaining it better. So let's get these wheels cleaned up. So that is the first hub uh, sanded. It's probably, I don't know, 95% clean, probably good enough. I'm gonna get this one coated with a bare metal primer, self etching so that it does not start to rust. All right, well, that's it for tonight. Um, rim, first rim completely cleaned, stripped, and primed. Um, as you can see, I'm working by uh, electric light now because the sun is just about completely gone. So we're gonna have to hold off until tomorrow to finish this up. 
Um, tomorrow morning, we will get the second rim stripped and primed. And then once that is done, we will get both of them uh, coated with their first coat of paint. All right, I'm back at One Straw Farm today. Um, we're gonna attempt, I have very little time. It's been a super busy week. I've got like this one and a half hour window on a Friday afternoon. Um, I've had all the parts sorted out and complete to put the wheel set back on this tractor, um, but I just haven't had any time to get up here. So um, I'm going to quickly see if I can't get these rear wheels mounted today. Um, and, uh, that's really all I've got time to do. I don't really have any time to do anything else. So if I can get that done today in the next hour and a half, um, it's to rain all day tomorrow, which is going to be a Saturday and then Sunday, I will come back and hopefully get this thing running once and for all. I have all the parts to do it. Um, I should be able to get it running and get the hydraulic top link put on it. Um, and then it should be ready to go up to New York. So let's see how we progress. All right, so I'm gonna call that a win for today. Got uh, the hubs mounted on the rims and both back wheels mounted on the tractor. It looks pretty freaking good. Let's see here. Yeah, well now with those nice new wheel sets all the way around, tires, rims, all refinished, the rest of the tractor is looking pretty shabby. So I guess it's gonna be 
time as I have a little chance here or there to pull those front tins off the tractor and at least paint those up, maybe put some new fenders on the back, which are in pretty beat up, rusty shape. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with my progress today. Wheel sets are done. That's all I've got time for today. Got to get back to Baltimore. It's supposed to rain all day tomorrow. We'll see. If it doesn't rain, I'll be back tomorrow and we're going to get this old girl started up. I've got all the, uh, the ignition and wiring um, in the trunk. I've uh, watched very carefully how to troubleshoot the entire system and what is involved in the old six volt system. So I just pulled the six volt battery out of the tractor. I'm going to take that back with me. I'm going to put that on the charger because I have a six volt charger. Let that sit for a day and uh, get it sort of as good as it can be. And then come back here either tomorrow or Sunday when the rain is done and get it in the tractor, troubleshoot it and change whatever electronic components I need to change to get it running and get this girl running again. Uh